Fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, huge problem in our country right now, growing, burgeoning. According to new data presented, this was back in 2011, five years ago, International Liver Congress, it's stating that we could be facing an epidemic in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, one of the major contributing factors to liver disease, cancer, morbidity, mortality worldwide. Study highlights show that the current rates of obesity, diabetes, other contributing factors over the next two decades will cause the prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease by 2030, not that far away, to be at 50% of the population. 50%. You say, well, I mean, you know, can't they treat that? Isn't there a, a drug? Ah, uh, no. Well, fatty liver, I always thought fatty liver people damaged their liver because of the alcohol that they drank. Yes, this one very specifically is non-alcoholic. There's other contributing factors that are not alcohol driven. So what are the consequences? Like what's, you know, what's the big deal? You know, can I just, uh, I mean, you know, yeah, they'll come up with something. They'll, they'll find a drug for that. Uh, I don't think so. Um, the problem, I don't want to get into the technicalities of how, how much sugar I consume or the poor diet and all the other confounding factors, but it begins to damage the liver. Fatty streaks begin to accumulate in the liver, beginning to eventually create like a cross-linking, damaging sections and portions of the liver, rendering them unutilizable, non-functional, long-term, higher rates of cancer of the liver, chronic degenerative types of liver disorders. It's a major, major problem. Fatty liver disease associated with a number of issues which we'll get into. Uh, thanks for joining us here. Joe DiMatteo of the Ask the Pharmacist group. Plenty of live stream videos for you or excuse me, um, YouTube videos for you on Ask Joe DiMatteo or you can go right to our, to go to YouTube channel, Ask Joe DiMatteo. You can look up fatty liver, you can look up headaches, you can search migraines, you can scroll through everything we've had, PMS, menopause, men's health and hormones. We've got, we've got them all up there for you today, fatty liver. <clears throat> you say, well, that's not me. Well, you're, don't, be so, don't be so fast to assume that it's not you. Be shocked at the number of families that we work with that present, come in their labs, went to the doc, had blood work done. They said, my liver enzymes are elevated. They don't know what's going on. They want to do a um, biopsy. They want to refer me to a hepatologist, a liver specialist. I really do not drink. I have an occasional drink, you know, maybe without with, the, with my friends or socially. I don't really drink. I really don't eat all that bad. That's one extreme. The other extreme is you don't drink, but you're overweight, you're obese, huge issues, all right? So we already know that the prevalence is rising. It is a significant disease and disorder. Being overweight and resistant to insulin, so obesity and my discussions for virtually decades now, folks that have not MS, but metabolic syndrome they're insulin resistant because of a history of a very poor diet. Lots of whites, lots of refines, not enough fibers, too much sugar, not enough real foods, huge problem. So obesity, insulin resistance, or slash metabolic syndrome, poor diet. And this insulin resistance scenario usually leads to weight gain, uh, type 2 diabetes onset, uh, increases your cardiovascular disease risk, increases the risk for hypertension, ED, and man, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. So if you're overweight and you're obese, it's not just a matter of, well, you need to shed a couple pounds. You need to be aware of the fact that eventually it will affect your liver. Being overweight and resistant to insulin constitute a greater risk for fatty, fatty liver than was previously thought. Research coming out of Sweden, the Annals of Medicine. It has long been known that large amounts of alcohol can cause fatty liver. More recent research has shown 
that obesity, insulin resistance cause fatty liver, which in turn is closely associated with, as I just mentioned, diabetes, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease. It turned out that the amount of fat in the liver was linked with obesity and insulin resistance was not at all affected by red wine. I want you to follow this closely. This article is sh showing that fatty liver disease has a greater affection, affinity for being overweight and a poor diet, wrong foods, more so than even alcohol. Now we consume too much alcohol um, as, as, as a population. This is saying that this is rapidly out this portion the diet and the obesity portion is rapidly outpacing the alcohol component of this. It turned out that the amount of fat in the liver was linked with obesity and insulin resistance was not at all affected by the red wine. Specifically after three months, none of the wine drinkers developed fatty liver or elevated liver enzymes or what are called transaminases. What's more, uh, the harmful LDL was 16% lower in the red wine component. Fatty liver can lead to cirrhosis of the liver, which is the most common of liver ailments in the Western world. Uh, roughly every fourth Swede, as of this article five years ago as well, has fatty liver. And we're saying within the next 10 to 15, 14 years, 15 years, that's going to be in this country uh, probably um, every one in two. Fatty liver. What can you do about this? And many of you don't even know you have it. You need to have liver enzymes done. If you're overweight, you're carrying significant amount of weight. And especially if you're carrying it in through your midsection called central adiposity, you're at a very, very high risk. What can you do about it? Number one, you've got to change your diet. Your diet has to move to foods that are richer in fiber. Must, must reduce the amount of sugar, uh, high fructose, corn syrup. You've, you've just got to just change your lifestyle, your diet. If there's a weight issue here, uh, there has to be some loss that takes place. So there's, there has to be some dietary components that eventually take place. Diet's number one. Number two, we also see now, which is very interesting, Another article piece that was just released probably about a year or so ago, the pathogenesis or the origin of the disease of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, they say remains somewhat still unclear. The initial accepted theory was the two-hit model. The first hit was lipid or fat accumulation because of insulin resistance leading to steatitosis, which is cirrhosis or damage to the liver. But oxidative stress, pro-inflammatory markers were the second hit. Now, that means bad diet, not enough antioxidants, no fiber, no vegetables, no fruit. I just pound bad foods. I eat drive throughs I eat donuts. I eat bagels. I just I eat poorly. I start to gain some weight. I create a lot of distress to my liver, and eventually I damage my liver. This is very interesting because now this takes it to a whole new level. So first, we talk about... We talk about alcohol, right? Then we talk about the diet and obesity, right? And how that plays. Now you're going to see how gut health, and we have a whole teaching on leaky gut, but this is going to, this is going to kind of set you back for a moment if you're battling fatty liver. Recently has been demonstrated in both adults and children, biopsy proven non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, notice it's happening in children too, is associated with intestinal permeability. Street term would be leaky gut. This is right out of a medical order, by the way. Biopsy proven, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, children and adults, is associated with, an, with the increase of intestinal permeability with disrupted intercellular tight junctions in the intestinal epithelium. The positive correlation exists between intestinal permeability, the severity of liver damage. The greater the amount of permeability or damage to the lining of the epithelium in the gut wall, to these jejunal gap junctions, the wider they are, 
the more things, junk, translocates through them, the greater the level of fatty liver disease. So now you enter, not only is it the possibility that it's alcohol, that it's diet, bad bacteria, bad things grown in the gut, and we just did a little teaching, and it's up on Ask Joe DiMatteo at, the, at YouTube um, on cleaning up or detoxing your gut. This all plays into this. And now we're flat out just saying that leaky gut, intestinal permeability. When I talked about this 15 years ago, I was kind of laughed at and mocked and scoffed and, you know, I don't know, who is this guy? What's he talking about? I, I, we were spot on with this 15, maybe 17 years ago, that intestinal permeability led to things like food sensitivities, food allergies, joint issues, encourages and opens the door to disorders like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, and there are other factors involved here. But now what we're seeing is if my gut is porous and leaky, and this is now, first of all, this was um, in, I'm, I'm looking for where this actually appeared, but this was in it, this was a medical study. This was out of a medical journal. This is not just some opinion based or, right? The more leaky my gut is, the more I damage the liver, all right? So what do I do? Well, first thing is, I started a moment ago, lose weight, change your diet. So your diet is number one. You've got to get to more of a whole foods diet. There has to be some weight loss issue for many of you here. You've got to be, begin to reduce the, what we call hepatic synthesis. So you, you've, got to, you've got to drop this so that you stop striating the liver so that there's no accumulation. And lastly, there's a couple areas of support that you can do. Number one, let's get you on some probiotics. I'm, I, if you've got fatty liver and you're not a drinker, and you're overweight, I'm going to really focus on these two with liver support that you'll see. But let's just say you are not a drinker, you're not really overweight, I'm going to probably start you out with probiotic 225, one packet uh, times 30 days, and then step you down to probiotic 100s, maybe for 30 days, and then put you to probiotic essentials. Why? Just because of what I just said about that leaky gut. So it, it depends on where you are. But if you've got a, a horrible diet and you've got an obesity and you're overweight, I'm going to start, these two are key. I'm probably going to start you maybe even just with probiotic essentials then. But if you don't have these other factors, I don't drink, my diet's really good, I, I, I don't really need to lose weight, then I'm going to go boom, boom, I'm going to work on your gut. So it would shift and it would change. Number two, uh, besides the probiotics, after weight loss, and liver issues, I'm going to put you on something that we use called TAPS. Turmeric, artichoke, picorrhiza, silymarin, milk thistle. I'm going to put you on one of those two times a day. Helps to produce and synthesize bile, bile and helps to clean up the liver. Next, I might even put you on liver essentials for a period of time, depending upon how high what are called your liver transaminases are, your liver enzymes, your ALT, your AST, your GGTP. You may not know what those are, but we can easily have those labs done and find out what they are if you haven't already, probably have if you're watching this teaching. ALK-FOS levels often are associated. So probiotics, plenty of them, lots of them. Change your diet in many of these cases. Heal up the gut and then begin to support the liver. Why? Because this liver, the portions of the liver that have been damaged, you've got to be able, you've got to be able to, you, they're, usually they're, it's what they call fatty streaks are throughout the liver. That means you impair detoxification long term. It means your liver cancer risks go up. That means cirrhosis, chronic, over a long period of time, you're sick. You, you can't, you, you become toxic, you become jaundiced very easily, and then you, you go to a hepatologist, you go to, to a liver specialist, and they're basically, they don't really won't do anything to try to promote health in the liver, kind of just wait until your liver basically fails. 
If you have a gluten issue, we need to get you off gluten. Many of you just maybe just need to reduce the amount of gluten that you consume. Often people with fatty liver don't consume enough quality proteins. I might put you on a very clean New Zealand way source of protein so that you make more glutathione. Buffered C and Perfect D. I mean, there's a lot of nutrients that we could go to here, but with fatty liver, besides the taps and the liver essentials, I'm going to do the buffered C because it'll help glutathione production. It indirectly helps liver functioning. And then I'm going to put you on Perfect E, which is a mixture of four tocotrienols, four tocopherols that help to reduce damage and trauma. And these two guys recycle one another. They help to protect the liver. This helps the liver to cleanse itself, gives you other nutrients that are supportive to liver functioning. The TAPS helps you to secrete more bile. There's no such thing as detoxing the liver. This is the closest concept that you get to it. So number one, do you drink? You need to make a decision there. Number two, um, you don't drink, but you're overweight and you have a poor diet. Major changes need to take place there. You could check off one and two, Joe, that's not me, and yet I have it. And this is happening in humongous numbers. It's scary. How is that happening? Well, intestinal permeability, leaky gut is number one. Bad things grown in the gut. Go watch our Detox Your Gut video. Um, it'll help you. And then if you've ruled out those first couple areas, then we start, we still load up with specific types of probiotics, do liver support, and then things that protect. Now, do we have other components that we might use? Yes, phosphatidylcholine and acetylcysteine. I mean, I, I do not want to list six, seven, eight different approaches nutrient-wise, but depending on how you do, we would do that. Fatty liver can have multiple areas of source. It can be drug-induced. It could be chemical-induced. It could be ethanol, alcohol-induced. It could just be that you just have a history of a bad diet, and you could have none of those and still have it, and now we're talking about gut health. I hope this helps you. Fatty liver disease, it is a burgeoning problem. Do not let this alter and change and take your life from you. God bless you. Thanks for viewing. Maybe you can share it with a friend or a neighbor. I'll see you next time.